Hi beautiful souls, this is Clara Camino. I wanted to create something that is easy to understand, that is relatable and that actually comes from the heart of most of us. And this is how I would like to go forward. <laughs> <laughs> Let's dump all the old ways. So this this time around, what I would like to do is um, answer questions like how how will the old structures go? How will we be saved or embraced by the divine? Um, what? How, how do, why is divine timing so long and why is it always so long and the most effective route? Why are we so entangled? And what I've decided to do is to answer all these questions by uh, enjoying the metaphors in movies and YouTubes that actually falls outside the realm of spirituality. And this is where the beauty of it all lies. You know, I think currently the spiritual industry is almost like a like, like an industry that's trying to let us know, think, think like, oh, you've got to, be, your purpose has to be in spirituality, in talking about words like kundalini, awakening, third eye opening. Um, oh, and there I go blank. But you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it's good when I go blank. Um, so what I will try and share with us, how the world shows up, that we are all spiritual. There are basically only three groups of people. The ones with open hearts, where everything happens through love, through their open hearts. The other group is, the group, and th those are the ones that are in service to others. And they need to learn to love themselves as well. Then there's the um, other team, which is uh, service to self. They come across to those that are open of heart, like rather selfish. Their modus operandi is always, what is in it for me? Now, what is very interesting is both of these groups belongs to the, our children of the divine. And it's not for us to, to judge. It's for us to understand and allow. Now, there's also a third group which is what I will just, throughout my videos going forward, I will just call them the harmies. Because even when people are in service to self, they are, it's okay for them to be selfish. But it was never in the, in the original scheme, it wasn't meant to go as harmful and dark as we are now. But we have gone as far as possible. That is the beauty of it. Now, every time that I am going to express something, you know, even when I make a statement like, we have gone as far as possible. We are on this journey to return back. It's vital that if, if this is something that you are truly grappling with, is to raise that as a comment for me to make a, a video on. I will also try to make notes of the promises that I make so that I don't leave a statement or a promise unanswered. In the, I will try to always stick to the theme because um, that is one of my <laughs> one of my little boo boos. I can really go off track once I latch onto a new theme, and I don't want to do that. So. In today's uh, or in the first video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give us hope, hope of how we will ascend, how, not the symptoms, not the steps, just the how, just for, for everyone that is open to it, to experience the loving embrace of the divine. The divine has always been present. The divine has always been watching. The divine has 
always been making plans and possibilities and potentials for us to return to our own divinity. Those three things um, are in all religions. It's those big words, omni big words. <laughs> Please don't ask me to use big words. English is not my first language. Let's not go there. Um, so so um, I'm going to try and share with you stories and movies and YouTube's discoveries, even math, science. You know, I, um, I don't leave any genre off the table. I remember way back when I still watched um, TV. I could even see the, the 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 other dimensions in adverts. So so the divine could speak to me in adverts, in comic books, in um, webtoons, in normal movies, in a mathematical calculation, in sacred this. Um, it's it's not because I have received any special. Um, abilities. It is because of the way that I ask my questions. And just so that you know, when I was a little girl, I um, there was this part in the Bible where it says something like, it is easier for a child to, I don't know what the rest of the thing is, <laughs> but that, but that verse um, that is is often mentioned. Now, at the time, I thought, oh, I better stay a child. But what I didn't know at the time was I was actually um, uh, cementing or or paving the way for my own heart to remain very childlike. Uh, in understanding the divine because the divine is not to be intellectually understood as a definition it is actually to be experienced so I experience all energies and um, yeah I don't think we need to know so much about me uh, I think it's far more important that we talk about the hope of how the divine is going to save us Hi, beautiful souls. This is Clara Camino. What I'm about to share with you, uh, how to interpret these movies, I think goes for all the movies. And this little clip I'll try to put into the majority of movies going forward. First of all, my first intuitive question to the divine is always, what can I watch? What must I watch? I do not watch psychological thrillers. I don't do horror. I don't do those crime scenes which actually upsets my own psyche. I do documentaries, comedies, rom-coms um, um, uh, based on true events and things like that. But basically, I just ask the divine, what must I watch? Now, what I've noticed is whatever they bring to me, it's not so much when it was created. It is... What is what I am, as well as humanity, is actually ready to hear and understand and have um, an understanding for. Then they bring those movies to me. Sometimes it's a collection of movies. Sometimes it's just one. And throughout these movies, I don't seek for the answers. I just go in number one to enjoy them. Number two. Every time something happens that actually triggers my own thought process, it also triggers my soul to ask a more deeper investigative thought. And that gets answered. Sometimes it gets answered immediately. Sometimes things would pass me by and then only a week or a month later, I would say, I wonder why that happened in that movie. And douche, I get another answer. So I call it a string theory. Once I ask starting, the, the the responses keep coming. And then um, I also prefer to do the videos like maybe a week or a month after I've watched it for the sole reason that sometimes I enjoy every line item in a movie on uh, multidimensional and I don't want to share that. First of all, because then it becomes so academic and that is not the purpose of how we should go through the world. It's only take one or two things. You know, when I was a little girl, 
um, I Spirit only told me to to remember one pearl of wisdom that I could choose per book or one thing in a movie that would change my heart. And that's it. Only one. One was enough. So I've been trained not to over-invest in things. Move forward. Enjoy your world. Um, it also, by, by following that advice for myself, because I don't have advice for other people, um, what happened is I didn't become fixated on any one genre, movie, book, or anything as the ultimate. It only became applicable for the time through which I was going until they bring it back into my memory. And another thing that I enjoy about it is if we don't overindulge and intellectualize into it, we don't become followers of one another. And in that way, we are also um, not co-creating a sub matrix within a matrix within a matrix so it's a lovely way to just go forth <laughs> just enjoy remember what you remember forget what you forget um enjoy what you want to do but don't don't give it so much importance you are the most important person in your life living it maneuvering it the way that you choose Hi, today we're going to talk about how the divine will save us, rescue us, how will our ascension happen basically into a higher reality. Now, um, of course, the discussion is based on one assumption. <laughs> there has to be an assumption, and that is that uh, we understand the greater purpose of what we are doing here on earth. If you want like a fairy tale, not not the not the Bible story, and not the dark Anunnaki stuff, but the but a, like a childlike story of what we are doing here on Earth. I can do a video on that. It is called the Big uh, Big Daddy Disco Ball. <laughs> so, um, if you want that story, then please just write it in the comments, and I'll know that there's interest. So how will this ascension happen? Um, will we know? Will we know beforehand? Will we know who will take us there? All the hows. Am I ready for it? Things like that. Now, the first thing that I want to share with you is the fact that we've got time to talk about it means that there is time to get my shop in order. There is time to get my house, which is my heart, in order. But it has come up, so it also means it's time to pack your bags for your holiday. But there's no time to waste either. So, this movie that I'm referring to is called The Thai Cave Rescue. Now, I would suggest just watch it. It's on Netflix. I don't get paid by Netflix or anything. It is just that is the story that got shown to me. And when I asked why am I watching it, um, the upstairs department, which is to me the realm of unconditional love, um, says, well, you ask the question, how will everyone ascend? How will we be saved from the darkness? Now, the first thing that we have to remember is that that. There is no external job for anyone. You just be you, I be me, and then we're actually on track. So the first thing is you can watch it if you want to, because otherwise I don't think the storyline might uh, make sense to you, because I use the story as a metaphor. It means that the events, the place, the things are all symbolic. It's not, it doesn't mean that one person that is playing that role will be um, your savior or things like that. It is based on a metaphor and you, you become your own character or a player in, in this. The second thing that I wanted to share, which is very important to me, is that 
all the people, whether they are alive, whether they are currently actors playing the role, as well as those individuals on whose lives this was based. I treat all lives as sacred. I am not an appointee of the divine to judge. So to me, everybody's lives are sacred. And I honor that. And it is not my intention to do a sensational or a like an expose on any private lives. I'm also not open for that. Okay, so in the cave rescue, the first thing that we're going to ask ourselves is why the cave? Now, the, the, the story is about the 12 little boys and their soccer coach, which got trapped in a cave. Now, currently, we are already trapped. <laughs> I thought that was good news. I didn't see myself going into a further entrapment. And I was so happy to hear that we are already entrapped. Now, you're going to say to me, but I'm not trapped. In a way, we are. We are trapped because we keep thinking that my personal liberation comes if I do that course or whether I go do that thing or I must use that product and blah, 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 whatever we do. We also feel trapped because we are trapped in a financial debt um, cycle where I need to work harder, smarter, more to earn more so that I can earn the very things that is more costly to keep me alive and hence the cycle goes. And the more I try, the sicker I get, the more medical aid I need, the more I need to go and find medical assistance. That is entrapment to me. So um, you can debate it for yourself. I don't it's not necessary for us to go into an argument. If you feel that you're not entrapped, well done. If you feel this makes sense, listen with your heart. Listen with your heart, not, not the critical mind that wants to criticize and just reason about everything. Feel it in your heart and whether it makes sense to you. So to me, it was revealed that we are already entrapped. And why I asked that is because I wanted to know whether we are going to get an even worse thing. No. Life is going to become more choppy because everybody that, that will be part of the ascension needs to realize how this liberation internally will happen. The second thing that comes to mind is when the youngsters decided to go into the cave, they looked at the signs in front of the cave and they saw that it's not monsoon season. Even the uh, weather forecasters, they were quite relaxed about it until one young girl, the intern, realized that something is out of the norm. Now, I first want to chat a little bit about the youngsters and the coach. So, our Ascension Day will come unpredictable. It will come out of the norm. The Divine is not showing her cards to anyone, including me, on when that day will be. And I think that's important to know so that we don't get ourselves busy with a future date. No. It is about that it will come, it will not be predictive, it will come, because divine will is the only will that can override the universal laws and our own free will. So they did nothing wrong. In fact, what they did was, there was brotherhood amongst them, there was joy amongst them. They were enjoying whatever life had to offer them. They were in celebration mode. And it, that is actually a cute little cue for us as well. It is far better to seek within your own world what, what is your happy zone. What is your joyful zone? Where do you meet your own divinity? You know, those little boys, when once they were in the cave, they enjoyed the glitter in the sky, in the roof of, of, the, um, of the cave. And that is quite a rare thing. 
Not many little children. You know, in today's society, it's all about the glitter and the electronics. That is a pivotal little moment. It is like, how, how can we all return to joy within who I am in what nature offers? Nothing external. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is the coach. So in this way, um, the coach's life has been um, designed, his purpose in life has been designed through his love for soccer, as well as all the sadness, suffering and traumas that he had to go through as a little boy. Now, I am not saying that we need to lose our parents and become a Buddhist monk in order to be um, a coach, a pillar of strength for anyone. That is not what a metaphor is about. But what it does show us is that whatever my life presented and I transmuted it into a, a strength, an inner strength for me, that is part of my journey, irrespective of what it is. So we don't look at our lives like I need to go do anything um, in order to be that pillar of strength. No, I just do what my heart designs and desires of me to be. Then I want to talk about the little intern that just out of nowhere felt that the weather was speaking to her. It nudged her to pay more attention whilst everyone else was like, oh, we can go on the weekend. Um, and this is how spirit will do the clarion call for each and every one. When we need to pay attention to something, spirit just nudges you to just ever so slightly become inquisitive, curious, or feel a little bit uncomfortable about something. It's not something that I'm just sliding at the moment. There's like, I almost want to ask another question. And this is also how we will all get called into um, a f like, like a, a next level um, or to call on an activity or to do something. I've actually tested these things. I, I don't just take what I read here and see as, um, as like the be all and end all. I test things. <laughs> so I tested and I said, divine, I am testing you. I want to know, like, how will you make me be at the right time at the right moment? And it's unbelievable that the divine actually delivered on that test. Um, okay, so the other thing that I now want to talk about is how this little intern also actually surpassed in her contribution than, than her superiors who wasn't available at the time to feel that nudge. So it means that age, gender, race, uh, designation, how much money you've got in the bank account, nothing worldly, nothing worldly will actually uh, stand in your way. When the divine calls on you, the divine calls on you. Capish. <laughs> so we don't have to worry about it. We will just feel it. It will be within the abilities of how we can show up. We will make connections. We will remember names and things um, of how to proceed like she did with the uh, woman that was actually in the mountains doing the weather reading. They were kept trying this and they kept trying that and then they would try that and then they would try that and they kept trying and I loved that as well. So I asked the upstairs department why, why so many solutions before they can come up to, with, the, with the ultimate one. And the divine explained to me, we are on a journey of discovery. How much can we use our own free will before we surrender to divine will? And how much can we almost like mess up the game? <laughs> 
by becoming workaholics and very materialistic and live in the ego world and become very artificial before we return. And we have to exhaust it before we can on an individual basis, but also on a humanity basis. Um, any person, whether you're a man or a woman or any, however you identify, if you've ever been trapped in a narcissistic relationship, you'll know that it's not like you get out very easily. You first try and you try and you try until you've exhausted and then suddenly you get your guts and, and you can get out if you're the lucky ones. So in the same way, we are in a very narcissistic relationship with our governments and with, let's just call it global power. And we have tried, and, and we are keep trying artificially with our egos, um, by, by ignoring things, by making it worse, by whatever. Um, I'm not judging here. I'm just letting you know that the divine has been watching it all. We've been receiving space for our own free will to try and test as many things. And then only does, at the ultimate final moment, the divine uh, kicks in and basically ascends us. So um, all those other ways were not wrong. Now I'm going to talk about the, the higher profile people and everybody showing up to do the rescue. Um, it's like, it's like, the, the, the first thing that touched me beautifully um, once all the mothers arrived is when the one minister also arrived and the first thing he says is, I have children too. You know, there is nothing as beautiful as once we actually feel the vibration of the divine recognizing that or like like when you recognize in your own heart when you have chosen the path of loving your own divinity having faith in that and it is but it is building a rapport through your heart not as a person that can uh, quote 400 verses. No, that's intellectual, but as a feeling, as a feeling in your heart. So that was quite powerful to me when he said that. It meant like whether it is your children, whether it is my children, whether it is our children, children of the divine are worthy. And that's why we're going to make the best. And um, I'm getting goosebumps because as I speak, the divine comes and, and also flows through my heart. Because every time that all of us, you included, when you speak loving words that, that, is, that are inspired by the divine, it actually will give your blueprint, your DNA, um, a signal. Okay. And where was I? <laughs> Okay, so, so now he's arrived and they do all the things. Now, I also like the fact that the first divers that went in were seal divers. And they then had to recognize, you know what? Cave diving and open sea diving are two different divings. And we all have to understand that. There is such a uniqueness in what we all contribute to this world. Even if we were all called divers, there is a uniqueness in each one of us of how we will contribute our little heart's gift to the world. So it had to play out that way as well. So I also want to talk about how when they were making all these plans and they were it was a very open discussion everybody could contribute and then just randomly when after they've decided and realized that we can't bring the little children consciously out of the cave because um I mean, just to be honest, never done a diving course, I would not have been able to do that. And I 
and I've or the divine has always said the first thing that you need to ask in a time of panic or chaos is to ask for calmness so that the divine can speak to you but I think a three hour controlled calmness that's next level so um I love that this one person just randomly unproven says why don't we make them sleep now um you know, people, people in our awake state, people sometimes refer to other people as like they are still asleep, they are not awakened. Um, I don't want to use the same derogatory words, or, or like sometimes um, people are in denial. I just want to share with you that in my life experience, all those things sometimes serves a purpose when the worst of news are being delivered and i slip into denial it is a it is an ability to stay calm and not escalate it when i receive and this has happened throughout my life as a from very young age when life gives me exceptionally uh traumatized information that I need to process I actually need to go physically sleep now I'm not saying that I'm bypassing anything it just means that I've learned how to I can get a fever that runs very scary right now I can just drink a glass of water go to bed command my soul to process whatever I need to process give me the steps when I come out and then my fever is broken <laughs> and it sometimes doesn't even take a lot to to go into high fever but that's not the point here um, the point is <laughs> that um, when we withdraw from something for a period of time and we do it consciously there's absolutely nothing wrong with it in my books <laughs> I'm not talking about bypassing ignoring and, and things like that okay so um so this man randomly just mentions that and i thought that's beautiful now do you know that even if that person didn't have the guts to speak up do you know that spirit has got the power to command our bodies to speak the truth when it's needed so it doesn't matter whether you are a shy person, whether you feel not strong enough to conquer the world or whatever, if it is your time to express something and you are divinely in tune, it will happen. <laughs> There's no deny in that. So we don't have to worry about it. But yes, this is what is so beautiful. Something never done before, the impossible was made possible. Because remember, the way, if I were to ask you, describe to me the essence of divinity, it's very difficult. But we've all learned that it's everywhere, everything for everyone. <laughs> um, and the impossible can be made possible. All potentials are for the take of the divine to make it happen. So it is showing us that it will be done in that way and it will be done in a way that none of us has thought about it before now there is something in my personal life as well where the divine often makes something that has never been done before and turn it into a chutzpah into something kind into something beautiful and sometimes the divine says oh I'm going to send you something. And you know what? I try with my human mind to come up with a zillion scenarios and they don't play out like that. So I know that there's always an X factor, something that we just cannot, um, we, we just cannot, not with our human minds, because our human minds can only repeat things that are already in us, in the, in the knowing field. Um, we are tapping into all potentials, that are yet unknown so that is beautiful now i want to talk about the
the two anesthetists, the, the, the doctor and his best friend, the, the cave divers, the specialists. Now, a lot of times people say like, oh, I want to know my purpose. I want to know. My... Well, your purpose is exactly what you enjoy. Just go do it. Don't make it so important that it has to be a spiritual cause somewhere. No, it is exactly what you enjoy. And as bizarre as it is, I mean, who would have thought that those were the, oh, that was the only anesthetist that doesn't go for deep sea diving He actually goes for cave diving and he loves it so much that this little tricky cave also brings joy to him. I mean, duh. <laughs> Talk about the coach who had to go through his life in order to be the little older brother figure for his 12 younger, younger brothers. Talk about this anesthetist and his best buddy that is a vet. Now, the only difference between the vet and the doctor is the one can can speak to or, or, or can hear the response. But it's both living things of the divine. And I just thought that was so beautiful. And how the two of them is like Tweedledum and Tweedledee won't go with the other. They come together. And they just happened to have had planned a holiday, so they had time in their calendars. Hey, that's divine stuff. That is synchronicity at work. So again, we will not miss that which is meant for us. We will hear the call. And that whole thing about parting of the seas, I don't know whether that was a real parting of the seas, but this to me is the parting of the seas. You know, once they've decided that this 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 impossible solution is our only possibility, we have to give it a try. That is when the politicians started saying, we've got that thing called diplomatic immunity. And according to me, oh, I'm so sorry, forgive me for judging, but I think that was the only and the first time that I thought Diplomatic immunity has been used wisely because I could never see and understand why diplomatic immunity needs to be given to a criminal element. Yay, never, no. Anyway, sidebar, let's not go there. Let's talk about hopeful things. So for me, it just shows that all man-made rules can change. And we are the ones that needs to change, needs to demand those changes. We are the ones that need to say any policy, any um, government uh, rules and regulations. If why, why? Oh, oh, we're going off track here. But just this one thing, it's too tempting to lose. Why do we get the right to vote? But why don't I get the, the, the right to unvote if I see that the one that we voted for made a mess? Why? We must have that as well. So I love the fact that the di diplomatic immunity could be granted to the doctors who did not at that time had a license to work in that country. Now I want to talk about all like the hydrologist coming up with detouring the water, um, pumping out the water and things like that. You know, very often we think about the euros as, as only this one or that one. But in true essence, there is teamwork. There is beautiful, beautiful teamwork. And by her being there, she brought new understandings to us um, of water behavior. And she came up with the solutions of pumping out the water so that that one part within the cave that um, was still dry, did, the, the water didn't rise higher and higher and higher. Um, but there is one thing that just touched my heart. And I, I just think like how amazing 
that spirit touched the heart of the directors who also wrote the script. Because remember, there's lots of information that we can still delve into. But it is when, when the surrounding area became saturated and she had to go to the rice farmers and ask them, can, can we flood your rice gardens? Look at me, all teary up. So that the water levels inside the cave doesn't rise. And I just want to tell you that when that woman stood up and said, you can have my rice paddy, it was the most angelic words that her heart could give. It is truly a magnificent offering from a heart that loves unconditionally. You know, it wasn't her children. It was children of the community. When she gave her rice paddy to be flooded, she gave her annual income. And this is where we have to understand that in order for the ascension to happen, it's not what I have. It is not how much certificates I've got. It's not how many bestsellers I've written. It boils down, does your heart weigh as light as a feather? And to me, those words are golden. It, it really touches me very, very deeply. Then she, when evening comes, she's already lost everything. And then she looked in her house. What is there more to give? And that is truly truly the work of a light heart a light heart is willing to lose whatever belongs to the world and then it seeks yet one more thing that it can give it is that beautiful i actually my throat is choking up now okay so the other thing that i wanted to talk about and i maybe want to end with this is why why the cave and then that almost like a pipeline uh, before they could exit that is that is the rebirth canal it represents the rebirth canal so it means that when we ascend when we ascend we will basically go through a little rebirth canal we will go through a rebirth for a brief moment, we will lose the consciousness of here to go there. Will it be painful? No. It will be as if we are asleep. And we will all have, just like each child had a diving, a diver uh, 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 with the child, we will have our angelic realm, our guardian angels with us helping us through that there is quite a lot that i can still say about it because every time that i have a moment it comes up to me but again i would like to leave it here and if there is anything that you don't understand please feel free to raise it and yet there is no need to subscribe if you must follow someone, follow your own heart.